Well, I won't say that I'm happy that we are finishing up the Baratie arc, but we have some big things coming up in the story, and I think the Baratie arc was just a small sample of the masterful storytelling Oda is preparing us for. With that said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and join the Discord down below, and let's jump into One Piece Volume 8, I Won't Die, featuring chapters 63 to 71. Part 1, Luffy vs. Krieg. This will cover chapters 63 to 66. This section has a ton of fighting. I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you believe that this section of the manga contained pure action and nothing more. But in between the scenes of Luffy fighting Don Krieg, we are given some excellent character moments that I will be discussing in this section. We start off the battle with Oda contrasting the two captains who are about to clash. Not in terms of strength, but in terms of their humanity. Krieg tells the group that Gin has lost all of his value, and that after he betrayed Krieg and is currently suffering from the MH5 poison, he surmises that letting Gin die would be a form of kindness. I love this scene's inclusion because it sharply contrasts with how Luffy viewed Zoro after his fight with Mihawk. Luffy was immediately concerned for Zoro, ready to risk his own life in defense of his friend, and not willing to allow Zoro to feel defeated. Luffy chooses to affirm his crew, while Krieg views them as slaves, husks of humanity that serve no other purpose than carrying out his desired goals. I think this contrast is further emphasized by Krieg's design and build, being more robot than man. He's more machine now than man, twisted and evil. While Krieg seemingly has an endless supply of new weapons and tricks he can pull to attack Luffy, Luffy rushes into battle filled with passion not letting the fire, explosions, or spears stop him in his pursuit of beating Don Krieg. Luffy, the rubber man, bleeds, while Krieg, the robotic man, hides behind his modifications. Luffy fights with his body, while Krieg fights with his technology. The two captains' fighting styles not only further this humanity versus lost humanity theme, but it is also something highlighted by Zeph and Sanji. My favorite part of this entire section is Zeph and Sanji's discussions about Luffy's grit. And yes, I use the word grit because that is how Zeph describes Luffy's tenacity. Zeph denotes this to Sanji because this is a clear trait that Sanji lacks. While Luffy bleeds and puts his body through hell in order to continue his dream, Sanji does it out of a place of indebtedness to someone. It is important to note that Sanji's dream of finding the All Blue was not mentioned until the flashback conveying to us that Sanji has all but given up on this dream, and this is something that Zeph is keenly aware of. This makes the phrase Sanji shouted at Zoro all the more powerful, because when Sanji told Zoro that it is easy to abandon your dreams, he was sharing his philosophy with both us and the people around him. But this is when we start to notice a subtle change in Sanji. As Luffy ends the fight with Don Krieg, finishing him with a fantastic gum gum giant gavel, we watch as Luffy falls into the water, Sanji recognizing that this is now the second time he has seen this happen as he dives in to save him. While I'm not going to go in depth about Gin taking Don Krieg away from the battle, I do want to mention it shows how fundamentally better Gin is at a leader than Krieg is. But ending off this section, we finally see Sanji come full circle, as when Luffy regains consciousness, the first thing Sanji wants to discuss with him is the All Blue showing us that his dream has once again been reignited thanks to the fuel provided by Luffy and Zoro. And this is something that Zeph watches on, and we see him crack a smile. Part 2, Sanji Joins the Crew. This will cover chapters 67 to 68. As the title of this section of the video might suggest, yes, our favorite kicking chef finally joins the crew. But what leads him to eventually join the crew is a perfect bow tie on what has been a fantastic arc. Essentially, Zeph leads the cooks to all insult Sanji's cooking, forcing him to storm angrily out of the baratier. This is when Luffy remarks that the soup Sanji made is absolutely fantastic. And the cooks all admit that they insulted Sanji's cooking as a way of convincing Sanji to join Luffy's crew and to leave the Baratier. Sanji hears all of this as he sits outside, and to me, I just really love the family dynamic of the Baratier chefs, and how they want to push Sanji to do his best and follow his dream, even if Sanji isn't willing to take the steps necessary to do so. I also love the fact that Luffy refuses to accept the chef's pleas for him to take Sanji along, telling them that he will only accept Sanji if Sanji himself agrees to join the crew. 
This shows the respect and admiration Luffy has for Sanji, as Luffy wants Sanji to follow his dream, but won't force him to join the crew if he isn't ready. And as all this is going on, and suddenly out of the blue, a panda shark crashes onto the Baratier with Yozaku in his mouth, and he informs Luffy that they need his power in order to rescue Nami, setting Luffy in motion to depart the Baratier, but not before Sanji finally agrees to accompany Luffy on his journey so he can help him become the King of the Pirates, and Luffy can help Sanji find the All Blue. The departing scene of the Baratier made me tear up, and for all you One Piece fans out there, you all know why. This entire interaction is absolutely perfect. Zeph telling Sanji to keep his feet dry, a call back to their time together when they were spent trapped on the rock, and Sanji breaking, falling to his knees and thanking Zeph for saving his life. This leads to the entire Baratier staff breaking down into tears, expressing how much Sanji means to them and how much they will miss him. Despite the fighting and the arguing, this group is a family, and one of their own is finally departing to follow his dream. And as Luffy announces that it's time to go, we leave Baratier and head towards a new threat just beyond the horizon. Part 3, Arlong and Nami's Secret. This will cover chapters 69 to 71. This final section of the volume primarily sees the story progress through the perspectives of three different groups. Luffy and Sanji, Usopp and Johnny, and Nami and Zoro. Since these groups' perspective of the story pretty much happens in chronological order absent a few scenes here and there, we're just going to start from the very beginning with Luffy and Sanji. They get a history lesson from Yozaku about Arlong and why he is such a menace. Arlong is a member of the Fishman Pirates, and he was released from prison and is currently wreaking havoc across the East Blue. But honestly, this entire piece of information is second-hand compared to the bombshell that is the Seven Warlords of the Sea. Yosaku explains that the Seven Warlords of the Sea are government-sanctioned pirates who have been hired by the government in exchange for a cut of their haul. Yosaku also reveals that Hawkeye, the swordsman who fought Zoro, is one of these Seven Warlords. And it makes it crystal clear to us, the audience, that these guys are no slouches. Now, it's been a while since I talked about any historical correlations from the manga, but I'm about to break this streak because, believe it or not, the idea of the Seven Warlords of the Sea is based on a real-life historical practice. The Seven Warlords of the Sea are based on the concept of privateering, a concept that was used in Middle Age Europe and became popular during the 15th century. Essentially, governments, in an attempt to take care of their pirate problem, hired them to attack enemy ships, in exchange for both pay and freedom. These privateers also gained the title of Sea Dogs, which is similar to the government dog term used to describe the Seven Warlords. I find it hilarious that as Yosaku is dumping all of this exposition on us, Luffy and Sanji couldn't be bothered to listen to what he has to say, allowing us to transition over to the grand adventures of the great Captain Usopp. Usopp and Johnny abandoned ship after they saw Fishman coming, leaving Zoro tied up to deal with the forces of Arlong, which we will be discussing shortly. But despite Usopp believing that he escaped an encounter with the Fishman, what he discovers is even more shocking than that, as he makes landfall in the destroyed village of Gosa. This conveys to both us and Usopp how powerful the Fishmen are, with them being ten times stronger than normal humans. And as the Fishman approaches Usopp, he prepares to fight when suddenly, a mysterious girl named Nojiko knocks Usopp out. This is when we have a ton of big reveals, including the fact that Nojiko is Nami's stepsister, the town of Goso is attacked by Arlong, and Nami herself is a member of the Arlong Pirates. Speaking of Nami, let's talk about her and her apparent pirate captain, Arlong. Arlong is first seen talking with a member of the Navy, who has cut a deal with him that in exchange for some money, he will overlook Arlong's transgressions, once again showing how corrupt the people in power truly are in this world. We also get a sense that Arlong has some sort of superiority complex over humans, constantly saying how much better fishmen are than humans, and this is when Nami enters the scene, and Zoro is brought into the place known as Arlong Park. Nami is shown to have a tattoo of the Arlong flag, meaning that she has really been working for him secretly and duping us this entire time. Right? Well, Zoro puts this to the test, throwing himself in the water with Nami knowing without her intervention, he will surely drown and die. This is the first sense that Nami gives us that she really isn't on the side of Arlong, as the volume ends with Nami diving in the ocean to save Zoro, 
and setting up an eventual coming clash between the Arlong Pirates and Luffy's gang. And that does it for Volume 8. I can't wait to get into the Arlong arc, so stay tuned as I learn more about Nami and hopefully bring her back to join the crew. With that being said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord, watch Doctor Strange Broken Reality, and stay tuned for Volumes 9 and 10 coming next week. Until then, stay safe and have a great weekend.